Hey there, and welcome to the Lightroom Classic Starter Guide. I am so glad you're here. If you are coming from, let's say, iPhoto, or you're coming from editing on your phone, or you're coming from even Photoshop or, or Lightroom CC, sometimes making the jump over to Lightroom Classic can be intimidating. But what I hope this video will do is empower you to realize that a lot of the things that you've been trying out and using in these more beginner programs, you have that ability to do in Lightroom Classic. There's just even more power behind it. So what we're gonna do is that we are going to make chapters out of this YouTube episode so that you can go back and reference. My recommendation would be that you watch this video all the way through and then come back to it and go chapter by chapter with Lightroom open yourself and be able to learn and practice what I'm showing you um, on your own. All right, so now let's dive into my computer and let's get started. I'm trying to walk through in my mind how to show you some basics without telling you too much that gets overwhelming. So in my mind, I'm treating this like I'm talking to my mom, okay? My mom has no idea what Lightroom even is. And so if I had to call her and say, hey, I need you to import some images and I need you just to do a basic quick little edit and export one for me, can you do that? This is what I would tell her. I'd say, okay, so you're gonna open up Lightroom and the only thing you need to know is that when you're in the library tab, this is where you're gonna view your photos, but we don't have any photos to view because this is a brand new catalog. And so when I open my catalog, you can see there are no photographs, there are no files, I need to add something. So let's add something together, let's go to import. This dialog box is going to pop up and on the left-hand side, you're going to find sources for where you can import from. This was a sweet newborn session that I did, but that's coming from a card that is um, in, inserted into the side of my computer. I'm gonna to go to the hard drive. This is an external hard drive with a shoot that I use for all access. We're gonna open that up. Now I do not cull my images. I don't select the ones that I wanna keep in Lightroom. I have a video about this. I can make more videos about this. Basically, I divide my folders into um, subfolders that are labeled unedited, edited, and five-star. Unedited is going to be, you'll see here, 1,900 photos, 43 gigabytes of space. These are all the images that I took. Why would I want to embed or, or, or import all those images into Lightroom? No, I want to just keep the 634 that I love. Over here, you're gonna have different selections that you can make with your import process. Um, but before we get over there, I actually think you wanna make sure that you are adding them. So you're adding them to the catalog without moving them. So moving them would mean that you're moving photos to a new location and adding them to a catalog. We don't need to do that. I want my images to stay on my hard drive and I'll show you that right here. This is what is on this hard drive. This is the folder that I'm accessing within Lightroom right here. When I import these photos, they're going to continue to live right here. So I'm adding them. This is always a question of what you should do. You just wanna add them. Um, I don't copy as a DNG. There's, there's reasons that people do different methods, but for me, my photos live on an external hard drive. I just wanna simply add them into Lightroom. Over here, you can make selections. You could apply a, a basic, like I used to do um, a basic import preset where it would make all of my images to have a really base layer edit uh, to kind of save me some time. Uh, but with the preset process, I don't really need that as much. And with AI editing, I really don't need that. So I don't do that anymore. Um, and then this was this is another video for another time, but there's a lot that you can do with applying some certain specific metadata to your images. We're not gonna deal with any of that. All we're gonna do is just import. So you're gonna see it importing. Everything you need to know about operations is up here. So you can see it's still importing. Um, and it is going to take a few seconds because it's making previews of images. So let's keep going inside the library module and then we'll break down the develop module. The things you don't really need to know uh, is about map, book, slideshow, print, web, none of that. Um, so what you can actually do is you can get rid of certain things. So I am just right clicking, and I don't know if this is gonna be helpful for some people, but it's helpful for me. I'm just gonna simplify all this. I never in my entire 15 year career have used any other tab except library and develop. So now that we have that straight, we're just gonna walk through what you can do in the library versus what you can do in the develop module. So this is the library module where you can just view your images. It allows you to quickly access them. You can see them, click through them if you need to find a specific one. 
but you're not going to be able to look at your images like this in the develop module. The develop module takes the image that's selected uh, and shows it large because this is your editing space. So once you're in the develop module, this is where the editing takes place. Now, I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty of editing, but I am going to show you everything that's offered within the develop module. So the histogram, I don't normally mess with. I do use it. I love seeing my data here of my settings, my ISO, my aperture, my shutter speed. That is all helpful, but I don't use my histogram to tell me where the highlights are, where the blackest blacks are. I just don't need that. Now down here, we have a lot of options. There's a lot happening here. This is going to highlight the basic setup. So what you see, um, the basic bar, it's going to show you all the things. Now, it's going to default to being on those sliders, but you can also go into um, the crop mode. You're going to have a drop down here that shows you how you can crop. This is a healing tool that allows you to do a lot of different things. You can either clone things out. So like a stop sign, or you can use content aware, which is going to basically use the smarts of the, I mean, look at that. That's pretty good. Uh, and so that was not a feature that was available to us years ago. This is more of a newer feature that I love. Um, and so that is going to help you eliminate things you don't love. Anyone who has thought, okay, I have to take some, uh, you know, a photo into Photoshop in order to get rid of an object, that is no longer the case. Lightroom has gotten a lot smarter. Um, right here, I can honestly tell you that I do not ever use the red eye corrector, ever. Um, and that's mainly because I'm not shooting with a camera that's even going to create a red eye issue. Now this is big time. Masking is when you're going to make isolated edits. So it means, oh, I'm just going to brighten his pants, or I want to brighten her hair, or I want her dress to be darker, or I want to lighten up this corner. Anything that's not an overall image edit, um, for the most part is going to happen within a masking option. Now masking, I could do a whole course on what is possible within this section, but some key things you need to know um, is that you can select just the subject, which is actually very good at. You can invert that. So now everything except them, like you could brighten everything except them if you wanted to. You can also select the sky, select the background and select certain people. This is somewhat creepy, but it knows there's person one and there's person two. And if you've never done this before, I mean, it is fascinating. In this exact image, he's facing away from the light. And so his face is a little bit darker. So I could select him. Then I can say, I just want to select his face. Face. Then I could say, and his body skin, so his hands and his neck. And then I'm going to create a mask. And then I'm going to say, oh, I'm going to just brighten up just his face, just a little bit here, so that his skin matches her skin. That is like just one little blip on the masking radar. The, the masking tool within Lightroom continues to be elevated. It continues um, to be impressive. And so that's another video for another time. If you have questions, about masking and how you can use it and what you can create with it. And just leave all those in the comments, because even if you're a beginner and you're watching this and you're like, I know all of this about Lightroom, you may not know everything about masking. I don't even know everything about masking. So leave comments and that could be a potential video in the future. Coming down here, this, let's get off of masking. This is the basic tab. Some even professional photographers stay here and don't look anywhere else. And that's a huge loss. Hey there, sorry to interject. I just wanted to pop in here. I hope you're enjoying your Lightroom guide, but I wanted to let you know if you're watching this because you are at the beginning of your photography journey, I wanna let you know there's a whole part of education that you need to dive into as well beyond editing and it is in lighting. It's in shooting, learning how to use your camera in manual mode. I have a resource for beginners. I'm gonna talk about it at the end. The KJ Starter Course would be a great place for you to begin your photography journey at a course level. I'm going to talk about it more at the end of this video. So the basic tab is going to allow you to do the basic edits that you would be able to do. You can even do some of these edits on an iPhone. So, you know, contrast is pretty self-explanatory, uh, but there's a lot of features here that are going to do really awesome things. And some photographers think that like, this is all they need. And maybe it is for them, but there's so much more that you can do within the develop module. So for example, the tonal curve. So I know that my default edit always has a backward C pattern. I have so much control here. Now, if you were thinking my Lightroom doesn't have that, I don't have sliders like that. Um, that might be because you're editing in Lightroom CC and Lightroom CC for some reason 
took away these sliders and you have to manipulate it with this curve and it's very frustrating. So what you're gonna see here is a color mixer and the color mixer allows you to adjust very specific colors. So if I thought, oh, I want his jacket to pop a little bit more with blue, so I'm going to enhance the blue, but it also enhances the floor. So I'm not gonna do that too much, but this is a great tool for when you need to reduce the orange skin tones a little bit, or you need to tone down some yellows. Maybe you're shooting in a really big, bright field with yellow sunflowers, but the yellow is overpowering. You would be able to adjust that here. Not only can you adjust the saturation of each individual color, but you can also change the hue. So if I wanted his, you know, the blue in this image, which is actually all over the image to look more teal, I could adjust that. I don't know why I would do that, but there are a lot of ways that you can use this to your advantage. I could literally make her, her dress look a little bit more pink than peach. So luminance is going to take a color, a specific color, and um, make that either brighter or darker. Um, this is also really helpful when you have some really orange skin as well. So color grading, this is amazing because it's basically going to say, okay, whatever the highlight of the image is, I'm going to change the tone of that. Whatever the shadow of the image is, I'm going to change the tone of that. Whatever the mid-tone or the mid-range of um, certain parts of the image are, I'm going to change that tone. And so the reason that's important is because up here, which I did not mention, this is where you adjust your warmth, your, your white balance, but it's going to warm up the entire image. Do you see how even the white is getting warm and they're getting very warm? And so sometimes there are scenarios where you want to warm up just the highlights, which normally in a lot of cases would be skin um, or just the shadows or just the midtones. And you can do that here. So one way that I would do that is I would click on highlights i'd go to hue 30 is a good hue for me and i'd do it at like 15 percent saturation that looks a little too milky for me so i'm going to take it down to eight percent saturation now if i wanted it to look a little less peachy i could go to 40 because that's going to pull in a little more yellow if i want it to look way more peachy then i'll go back to 25 and that's going to add in more red you can see the dial changing here as i change the hue and you can see how that affects the image so color grading is super powerful. Detail section is talking about sharpening. There's amazing, and when I, I mean, this is a whole nother video, but noise reduction is incredible um, now. It, it's, it takes a little bit of time uh, because it's, it's using AI, but the noise reduction will change your life lens corrections um, this is going to be where you enable lens corrections and do you see that darkening on the edges i always have this set up automatically because there's never going to be a time when i don't want to take away some of those distortion elements that come from using a certain lens um, and then here this is going to be where if you have chromatic aberration so like I don't even think I said that right. But when you have the very slight purple outlining of um, a very small detail in your lens, it's just it's just an unfortunate thing that can sometimes happen. That can sometimes happen. Um, but you can actually get rid of some of that here with the defringe option. So lens corrections is important. Transform rarely need that. So lens blur is something that I think could be a really cool tool in very specific situations. But what it does, I'll go ahead and show you what it does. Let's use like, um, I don't know, I'm trying to find an image where it would show up well. This was them walking down the steps. Okay, so let's say I wanted to blur the background a little bit. I could do that here and it does look cool, but there's some people that are shooting at 5.6 and then do you see what it just did? Like look at the background, see what it just did there? That doesn't look real. So that looks fine. That does not. And I think there's a lot of photographers that don't know the line of what looks natural. So it's is it a fine tool? Yes, I think it's awesome for some things and for some people. You can make a lot of adjustments in the bokeh and the way that you are, um, you know, where you're applying it and how much you're applying it. But there's a lot to learn there. So let's keep going. Effects, this is going to be something that I, because I don't use a lot of grain and I'm not doing a lot with vignetting, I don't really use effects that much. Calibration can be really good. Um, Whenever I am trying to do some extra adjustments to my greens, it's kind of like a last resort color toolkit that I use, um, and I rarely use it. It's, it really comes into play when I'm really struggling. Okay, so last but not least, if you have an image that you're like, okay, I love the way this looks, I'm ready to export, you wanna make sure whatever you're exporting is selected, and then you're gonna go to, guess what? Export. You're gonna click export. There are so many different things that you could select. I'm gonna hit the most important ones. You need to know where it's going, okay? So I would go here and then I, where's my, there we go. Um, and then I would find the folder and then I would take it into the edited, edited folder. Now, this does not 
So I'm just going to put it right in this folder. I'm also going to change the name. So this is a sample edit. You can change the name right here. It's going to keep the original file number. I like this pattern because it keeps some part of the original file name attached to it. Um, and then you don't need anything for video file settings. You want to make sure that you are exporting to a JPEG. It does not need to be JPEG XL. Your quality can be 100%. I don't resize my R6 images because they're already a decent size to begin with. I do make sure that the resolution is 300. Um, I sharpen from my screen in a standard amount and I export. So there you have it, a quick overview, a beginner's intro lesson into Lightroom. I hope you enjoyed it. All right, you did it. You made it through that entire Lightroom guide. I hope it was beneficial. You feel like you know everything, the interface, you know where to find things. That is something that I wish I had at the beginning of my career. The other thing that I wish I had at the beginning of my career was someone telling me that editing is not the end all be all to creating great photos. If you actually want great photos that are professional and you actually want to get your life back and not live in Lightroom because you have to fix so much stuff in your photos, you have to learn how to actually shoot well in camera. You have to learn how to shoot in manual and you have to learn how to recognize amazing light. Editing is actually secondary to all of that. So if you're in a season where you're like, yeah, I just don't even know when I'm going to get good photos. I don't even know when I'm shooting well and when I'm not shooting well. Chances are you would benefit greatly from the KJ Starter Course. It was designed with you in mind. You can literally see me shoot and find good light through the lens of my camera. You can see what I'm seeing and watch me adjust my aperture, my shutter speed, my ISO, even my white balance. It's an amazing resource for beginners. I wish I had this when I started. And so if this was beneficial for you for editing, I'm even talking about even more of my editing style in the starter course, but I'm also teaching you the ins and outs of shooting manual, setting up your camera for success and finding amazing natural light. So that is linked below. It's affordable, it's available, and I'd love for you to join me. So if you loved this, make sure you like and subscribe. I would love for you to be a part of other videos that are released in the future. We have a playlist that's dedicated to beginners, so make sure you watch all those videos. It's all free, and I cannot wait to see you in the next episode. Thanks for tuning in. Bye. Bye. <laughs>